Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back. So let's continue with the ministry questions. So uh, question number one hundred. Having heard the elbow against the table, a patient felt burning prick, burning and pricking on the internal surface of forearm. Which nerve was traumatized in this case? So actually, this question is uh, not. Right completely, but let's see why. So uh, this is the right humerus and its relation with the other nerves. So here there is axillary nerve in the surgical neck of humerus, the radial nerve in the um, spiral groove or groove or radial groove. For to know more about the radial nerve, please watch my previous video. The link will be in the description box. And then the median nerve, which is it just passes, it is mainly damaged in the supracondylar fracture and ulnar nerve, which is mainly found on the posterior side of medial epicondyle. On the posterior side of the medial epicondyle. So uh, here are the areas at the nerves can be fractured. So if they ask you there's a fracture of surgical neck, then what nerve will be damaged? This axillary nerve. And what is its uh, root value? C5, C6. Again, if you want to know more about the root value, please watch my video on the brachial plexus. And also uh, the muscle it will be supplying will be the deltoid and the problem will be in abduction. And this was in the surgical neck of humerus. Uh, and in the shaft of humerus on the posterior side, again in the radial groove. Uh, and so the fracture can actually damage the radial nerve. And the problem will be what? In the extension and there will be wrist drop. This is to just review. And uh, in the supracondylar fracture, the main uh, nerve damage will be in median nerve. This is not asked in PROG. It is basically a USMLE point. They'll give you the symptoms of median nerve damage and ask uh, how it, it can be. It can be due to the supracondylar fracture. So let's look at this. This, is, this was a right humerus and this was a medial epicondyle. Uh, and on the posterior side, the, the ulnar nerve is present in a cubital tunnel. It's not carpal tunnel, it is different. It is what? A cubital tunnel. And here if it is damaged, it can lead to a cubital tunnel syndrome. Okay, so why is it called the funny bone? Because uh, when you tap the ulnar nerve hair on the posterior surface of medial epicondyle, there will be pricking sensation in the area supplied by the ulnar nerve. And, the, and what will be the areas of ulnar nerve? It will be the medial side of on both palmar and dorsal surface of one and a half fingers. So these are the areas, uh, sensory areas that are supplied by the ulnar nerve and not the forearm. So that's why in this question, it was written on the internal, basically the medial surface of forearm. No, the medial surface of forearm is supplied by the medial cutaneous nerve of forearm. And that was, uh, again, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm. It is not supplied by the ulnar nerve. So that's why I was saying this question is wrong. But uh, since he hurt his elbow and in the elbow, the, in the medial epicondyle, because it is uh, protruding out, it is very easy to damage or at least hit the ulnar nerve. So it can lead to breaking sensation. But in the in internal or the medial surface of hand, not forearm, but still here, the answer is what? The ulnar nerve. And uh, 
so yeah so the tenels test what is a tenels test that if you uh, press or tap on a nerve it will lead to the uh, pricking or burning sensation in the area supplied by that nerve so it is mainly used for carpal tunnel syndrome because it is most common and but it can also be used for the cubital tunnel syndrome and what is again the cubital tunnel syndrome where the ulnar nerve is impinged in the medial epicondyle so that was about question number 100 so let's go on to the next question question 101 which nerve is damaged if the right nasolabial fold is smooth the right right orbital fissure is dilated eyelids do not close and difficulties arouse while talking or eating so you can imagine that they are talking about the facial muscles so the facial muscles these are not uh, working and mainly on the right side so on the um, they are talking about nothing but the bell's palsy here and to know more about bell's palsy i have already given an overview about bell's palsy it is a lower motor neuron lesion of the facial nerve lower motor neuron palsy of the facial nerve the link will be in the description box so uh, but still let's just write what are, what will be the symptoms so, so this will be ipsilateral ipsilateral lesion in the lower motor neuron palsy of cranial nerve number 7 both the muscles of upper and lower part of the face will be affected the there will be no wrinkling of forehead the eyes cannot shut the eyes cannot shut why because because orbicularis oculibris oculi muscle is not being supplied by the cranial nerve number 7 and droopy corners of the mouth so the person cannot smile so basically all the uh, facial muscles that are supplied by the facial nerve will not be uh, working so we can we can see all these symptoms okay so right so right the nasolabial fold is smooth that that is when you smile that uh, this you can't smile and Uh, the eyelids don't close that is orbicularis oculi is not working and this problem in uh, talking and eating so all the buccinator and orbicularis oris muscle so these are not being supplied by the cranial nerve number 7 okay so similar to this question is question number 107 that the patient cannot lift his eyebrow on one side and close his eyelids again orbicularis oculi and bare his teeth he he cannot smile so all these are problem that his facial muscles are not working so the problem will be here again the facial nerve cranial nerve number 7 so next question okay so after a cranial trauma with the damage of the superior wall of right eye socket a patient lost the possibility to lift the upper eyelid of the right eye and also look up so he cannot um, his eyelid cannot be lifted and he also cannot look up with his eye so uh, let's talk about the extra ocular muscles of the eye it is a uh, very easy to remember superior oblique inferior oblique medial rectus lateral rectus superior rectus and inferior rectus so these are the muscles this is just an image uh, so let's write about their function okay so superior uh, superior rectus is mainly for elevation of the eye eyeball inferior rectus is mainly for the depression of eyeball medial rectus is for 
adduction that is towards the middle axis of the body anything that will be a uh, movement of eye towards the nose and lateral rectus for abduction of eyeball that is movement of eyeball away from the body or away from the nose uh, superior oblique is for mainly for intorsion i'll show you and inferior oblique for extorsion so but uh, these are the main function of these muscles but uh, all these muscles can also have other functions like the superior rectus can also help in intorsion intorsion and also adduction inferior rectus can be for uh, for like opposite to the superior rectus it will be depression extorsion and abduction for superior oblique it, it will be intorsion depression and abduction and again opposite for inferior oblique extorsion elevation and adduction so let's con consider this is the right eye superior rectus will elevate the eyeball inferior rectus will depress the eyeball inferior oblique will elevate the eyeball but also it will extort extort the eyeball so that will be the movement of eyeball away from the body or away from the nose and superior oblique will depress the eyeball and intorsion superior oblique will so and very easy for medial rectus it will be adduction towards the nose and for the lateral rectus abduction that is away from the nose but all these have different innervation so lateral rectus lateral rectus is supplied by the sixth cranial nerve that is the abducens nerve while while the superior oblique muscle it is supplied by superior oblique is supplied by fourth cranial nerve that is a trochlear nerve and rest all these are supplied by cranial nerve number 3 the oculomotor nerve so uh, you can remember it by a mnemonic it was it is given in the bd chaurasia that is so4 lr6 just remember it like a chemical formula so4 lr6 superior oblique is supplied by the trochlear nerve the cranial nerve number 4 and the lateral rectus is supplied by abducens nerve the cranial nerve number 6 rest all the muscles of eye these are supplied by cranial nerve number 3 the oculomotor nerve so let's see which muscles are supplied by the oculomotor nerve so oculomotor nerve has basically three uh, two branch a superior branch and an inferior branch superior branch supplies superior rectus and levator palpebrae superioris so this is basic uh, this muscle basically elevates the eyelid so uh levator means elevates palpebrae matlab eyelid and superioris means the upper eyelid so um the inferior branch it supplies the inferior rectus 
medial rectus and inferior oblique these are the motor branches but the oculomotor nerve is also a parasympathetic nerve so so it also has parasympathetic supply to the sphincter pupillae it constricts the pupil and the ciliary muscles it is for the accommodation so if so let's talk about the when there was when there is problem with the cranial nerve number 3 or the oculomotor nerve uh, when when this nerve will be damaged there will be there is still will be two muscles that will be working because these are not supplied by the oculomotor nerve that will be the so4 lr6 right so the superior oblique if you remember its its function was to depress the eye wall and the lateral rectus was to for the abduction so when these two muscles are working and rest all are paralyzed the eye will be down and out so what will it will be called it will be called down and out eye so you can see in this image the eye wall is outward but also downwards so this is a down and out position of eye this will be in uh, when there is damage of cranial nerve number 3 but also other symptoms that will uh, will be present is ptosis ptosis means that the eyelid will be droopy why because the cranial nerve number 3 was supplying the levator palpebris superioris so when that muscle is uh, um, paralyzed the eyelids will droop down and also that there will be midriasis present midriasis means that the uh, pupil will be dilated and now again why because the oculomotor nerve also has parasympathetic branches to the sphincter pupillae muscle which was constricting the pupil and now when this nerve is damaged the pupil cannot be constricted uh, but the sympathetic fibers which are supplying the dilator dilator pupillae muscle it will still be working so the pupil will be dilated so these are the uh, three symptoms 1 2 3 that will be present in the palsy of cranial nerve number 3 okay so uh, let's also discuss some other questions that are related to this topic okay so after a cold patient had incomplete eyeball abduction so you know abduction away from the body that will be what lateral rectus and the lateral rectus if you remember so4 lr6 was the sixth cranial nerve or the abducens nerve so question number 122 there is a patient has ptosis so if you remember ptosis that is the drooping of upper eyelid divergent strabismus Tri divergent also means away from the body so the they are saying that the eyelid the eyeball is basically away so they are saying divergent strabismus so they are basically saying that the eyeball is away from the body pointing outwards and also there is accommodation disorders 
midriatic pupils so you see all these symptoms are for cranial nerve number 3 injury uh and process was because levator palpebrae superioris is damaged strabismus is because the lateral rectus is still working because it was supplied by the abducens nerve accommodation disorder because it was also supplying the ciliary muscle the and midriatic pupil why because it was also supplying the sphincter pupillae muscle and all these muscles cannot work now because there is damage of cranial nerve number 3 okay next question same question question number 130 blepharoptosis uh, blepharo means eyelid ptosis means drooping so there is drooping of upper eyelid the eyeball can be lift eyeball can't be lifted upwards that means uh, there is problem with the superior rectus the eyeball is diverted outside again that picture down and out position of eye is in the cranial nerve number 3 palsy and next the pupil is dilated same because the sphincter pupilla is not working and the patient can can't see at short distance means there is accommodation disorder right So see how many hints are keywords I have given for the ocular motor nerve palsy. So next question: A hematoma caused by hematoma in the zone of middle cranial fossa has led to midriatic pupil on the affected side. So uh, see, midriatic pupil means either. the uh, dilator pupilla is overworking or the sphincter pupilla is not working and in the middle cranial fossa uh, you see the it can be oculomotor can be damaged when it is passing through the superior orbital fissure when it is passing through the superior orbital fissure or when it is passing through the cavernous sinus or simply when there is increase intracranial pressure so all these things so you know these two are specifically in the middle cranial fossa and in, and uh, but it can also be damaged when increase intracranial pressure or when it is uh, impinged with the temporal bone so all these things it can lead to the damage of oculomotor and you know oculomotor nerve was supplying the sphincter pupillae and now when it is damaged the pupil cannot be constricted so there will be midriasis or the pupil will will be dilated so that's it for this video if you want to know more about these topics in detail please contact the number in the description box below and also if you like the videos please consider subscribing to my channel it will help me grow a lot Thank you see you soon